Hi and welcome to part two of this very special ACAN presentation. On the first video, uh, don't forget if you missed that you can always check out our previous video that started this whole series off, part one. But on this one we're going to show another variation that you can use and this is one of those kind of tricks that works really well. Now it works better in a live environment so what you guys are going to see here won't be too impressive and you'll probably look at it and think well it's a little bit lame but trust me in a live situation where you've got good misdirection and people around you it works brilliantly. What do I like about this version? Well if you go to a party, a club, someone shoves a deck of cards in your hand and says do a trick you can actually perform this using a regular deck so there's absolutely no setup so we'll shuffle the cards I want the audience member not to mess around taking the card I'm just going to get them to think of one of the cards they see so uh, you can do any version but if I just dribble these and just say to my audience member can you remember that card I show it to the camera up there so you can all see the card that's been chosen. Okay. Once they've chosen that card, you basically just tell them, can you just remember that card from this point on? Keep it inside your head, going around and around. Just imagine that card. Okay. I'll shuffle the cards up. Now, I now need a number from you, any number between 1 and 52. Okay. Because in a pack of cards, you have 52 playing cards. I want you to think of one of the cards in here. Just a number, 1 to 52. And they can have any number. Let's say, just to keep the video short and sweet, let's just choose 9. Okay. I'm going to deal the cards down one at a time, face up. Card number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here is the ninth card here, an absolute free choice. But let's just recap on two random things that have happened with these cards. First of all, you thought of a card. For the first time, tell me and the audience, what was the card you were thinking of? The Jack of Hearts. The Jack of Hearts, out of all of these, there's no Jack of Hearts there. We can see that. Okay. And the number you chose was 9. So two random occurrences. Here is the ninth card. You could have had any. And there is your thought of card, the Jack of Hearts in the ninth position. You could have had the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, the 13th, the 14th and so on and so forth. And that's the perfect ACAN. Now the trick you've just seen performed is one of my favourite versions and I know it probably looked a little bit simplistic on the video and that's because the problem with video is that camera there is looking directly at the cards and nowhere else. It's not looking at my face when I'm talking to you as in a real life situation would be people look at your eyes, you make eye contact with them, there's people around them, noises, and you get that great misdirection. So you probably saw straight away how the trick was done, and I wasn't trying to hide it, but how I performed it is how I've performed it since probably the early 80s. It's also one of those annoying tricks that you think you invented, but you suddenly find out years later that it's been around for over a hundred years. So um, I always believed this was one that I came up with just by card mucking, as us magicians do while watching TV. It's very simple, but it is strong. Use any pack of card, get them to pick a card. You can either get them to take a card or get them to view a card but you've just got to get it worked to the top of the pack. Okay, so whichever card they pick, from the point, you always want to try and brainwash them into believing that they thought of the card. And that's why you probably saw throughout the routine, I kept referring to the fact you're thinking of a card, you thought of any card out of the 52. Of course they didn't. They saw a card in the pack, but you want to get away from that. 
The card, say for example that was a card that they just glimpsed and they're now thinking of, you work it to the top of the pack. Now, very simply, I just take a few cards, just about half a dozen, and I need to put these so they're face to face, like that. Now, you can do this quite openly. Now, I know you experts at card manipulation will do this invisibly. I still, since the early 80s of doing this, never been caught. Okay, I will just cut my hands over the top, hold a break above these, and then I would then just, let me just turn it side on so this camera above me can see. I literally do this. I turn the lower portion over. But in doing so, when I'm looking at the audience, I do this and I hold the cards up in one movement to say, we've got 52 cards here. Think of a, one of those cards. So even if you do the move badly, it's disguised by you moving your hand up. <clears throat> What you have now are that block of cards face to face. So let me just do that again. Like this, I then say, look, just want you to think of any of the cards, number, blah, blah, blah. You then take the pack, and it doesn't matter which number they give, 20, 30, and you can also deal them face up because there's no stacking. Okay, and when you get to the the number, I tend to stop and just push it forward a little bit, just for visual. Okay, You then recap, because you want to divert their attention away from this, so you just recap and say, look, for the first time, tell me what was the card that you're thinking of, and all this movement with your hands, because you need to flip this pack over. And I just do it like this, while they say, for the very first time, what was the card that you were thinking of? and now say the eight of clubs. And you can just do any kind of thing. Let's just take a look, it's not here. You can spread these, that diverts their attention onto here. While you're talking, you can then just push this card forward again so it's got the same layout as you had a few moments ago. But of course you've turned the pack over. And then when you deal this down, it just blows them away. The reason I took half a dozen cards is because it now allows me to say if you're chosen a higher number and you can deal a few cards down so they really are convinced of that and that's a trick that I call countdown very useful one to do without any setup on there so as usual let's see how many of the criteria that's required for a perfect day can, it ticks. The first one is, can the cards be shuffled by the audience? 100%, yes, because you've borrowed the cards. Tick that. Secondly, can they have any card mentally selected? Well, not really, because they, you've got to control the card they think of to the top. So any kind of method but you're not forcing you don't have to force a card they so I suppose in a way we can give half a ticker they can have any card there's no restriction on the cards that they choose okay um, so that's the second part the third part is can they have any number of course they can 1 to 52 we can tick that we're doing well can the audience handle all the cards throughout the routine. No, they can't because you've got to do some sleight of hand. Finally, can the audience deal the cards? No, they can't. And can they be dealt face up? Well, I'm going to give it half a tick for that because yes, the cards can be dealt face up because they're not in any order. But of course, you need to handle the cards. So we give it half a tick for that. And that's Countdown. We're going to look at a commercially available effect, which to me is very similar to the countdown that I've just shown you. Uh, and this one was called Ice Cold ACAN. Now, there was a lot of um, comments made about this when it first got released within the Magic Fraternity, mainly because of the mis-selling. They produced a trailer video that made it look dynamic, but 
a lot of it wasn't really true. So uh, there was a lot of people making comments within the forums about this particular commercial version. And the reason I've kind of bundled it with the previous effect, which, which was of course um, the uh, countdown, is because it's very similar in the fact of turning packs over. Let's first of all show you the effect as it in an ideal situation. This is the perfect situation, by the way. You introduce a pack of cards, you put them on the table, you then ask a spectator to think of any playing card they wish. Let's say, for example, they said the Five of Hearts. The Five of Hearts. You then ask them to give you any number between 1 and 52, and they really do have a free choice. 1 to 52, let's say 10 just to keep it simple. You remove the cards from the pack. There's nothing else in there. You deal down one, two, three, four, five, but they chose 10 as the number that they want to deal, and we've done five on there. What was the card again you wanted from this pack? Five of hearts. So that there's no cheating, some people think I cheat when I deal, I'll put the cards down. So five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here is the tenth card, which happens to be their thought of card. Now, when you first see this, you think, what a great trick. One of the complaints on the trick itself on the trailer was the fact that on the trailer they dealt these cards face up. You cannot do that, okay? Let's first of all take a look at the pack itself. I'm gonna put it back to how it was. Now the way the trick works is you have two sets of cards. There's 26 cards here and 26 here. In here, if I show the camera, there's all the red cards. Ace through to King of Diamonds. Ace through to King of Hearts. Those are stacked on there. The other 26 cards are the same, but the, they're the black cards. So we have Ace of Spades through to King of Spades and Ace through to King of Clubs. Now because I know this here, if someone was to say the five of clubs, I know that the five of clubs is the fifth card down. There. Okay. You can see that because of the order of the cards. Ace through to five. So you're probably getting ahead of me now and realizing how this works. If they said the five of clubs, I know that that's the fifth card from the top of this side. Now these are joined together face to face. So when I remove the cards from the box, I pull them out with the red cards on top. Now because I know that the five of clubs is the fifth one from the top here, I need to remove five from here. One, two, three, four, five. But through some byplay, some misdirection, I need to flip these over. And if you watch people perform this, on YouTube videos, you'll see this. Then I can deal with the next five down. One, two, three, four, five, and there it is there. Now, as mentioned, that was the ideal scenario, but there are a few issues with this. First of all, the trailer said you can deal with these cards face up. You can't because they're all in order. Okay, and that will give the game away. Secondly, there's a problem that comes when they choose a number. You can't always allow them to choose any number. There's a bit of manipulation that has to go on with the audience. And I'll give you an example. Here I've got 26 red cards. Now, what happens if somebody chooses the The Eight of Diamonds. Okay, now the Eight of Diamonds I know is there because I know I've got 13 cards here, which is the Ace to King of Hearts, 
But then I've got the diamonds here, another eight cards on there. So we're talking about 21 cards from the top. Now what happens if they choose eight of diamonds and they want number five or even ten? You're not going to be able to deal down to get to that card. It's too deep in the pack. You have the same problem if they choose a spade. Because it's in the lower section of the pack, you can't do that. So there is a bit of manipulation with the numbers, so you can't really have that. But that's how it works. If, when you look at this, I actually think this is a fantastic version. It's a great idea. But it doesn't always work as sweet as the promo video would have you believe. So, let's go through the tick boxes. First of all, can the cards be shuffled by the audience before the trick starts? No, they can't. Definitely not. Can they choose any card? Now this is a good thing, is that they don't have to look at the cards, they can think of one. And they can have any card thought of, so we'll tick that. Can they have any number between 1 and 52? Well, in an ideal world you would think so, but they can't. So we can't tick that, they can't have any number from 1 to 52. There is some restriction on there. Now some people might say, well, no, they can choose any number, but you'll have to do some cutting of the cards. Or, But that's going back to not the original effect. Can the magician not touch the cards? In other words, can they stay in the hands of the spectator? No, they can't. And finally, uh, can the cards be dealt face up by the audience? And the answer to that is no, the audience can't deal with them and no, you can't deal with them face up. It's actually interesting that the makers of the trick did come back and say, in our instructions, we do show you how you can deal the cards face up. But the method they give is a totally different trick. That's memorizing a deck. It's not using what you were sold. So it was a little bit misleading. Okay. The thing I like about this is if they choose hearts or clubs it's great it works fantastic but um that's the ice cold acan so at this point in the video we're doing this series of five parts we're on part two at the moment we've still got another three to go looking at variations so far none of them have ticked all the boxes maybe on our journey through the next few video series we'll come across the perfect ACAN. Till then, don't forget to subscribe and see you soon.